So next thing I want to uh, show is a smart limit. Like this is a uh, limit of plugin. I think it's it's obvious from the name. Um, again, same logic as with um, the compressor and the and the EQ. You can uh, hit the learn button, uh, let the plugin listen to to the signal for a couple of seconds, and then it automatically suggests the main um, limiting parameters. So in this case, it's a limit. Um, an attack and release for the limiter and the gain. Um, and uh, the one thing that's really nice with, with the limiter in terms of visualization is the, the loudness and dynamics monitoring. Because uh, a lot of times when you when you are using a limiter, at least in, in this case, it's mainly designed for um, kind of mixes. So that's also the reason why all the profiles are really genres and not individual tracks. So, and if you're um, having this limiter on the on the master bus, then it's quite often interesting to know more about the the dynamics and the and the loudness of your signal because you may want to release it for Spotify or whatever. And, and what we um, implemented for smart limit is the loudness and dynamics grid. And it is uh, on the one hand, it's interesting just in terms of what it is because it shows the relation of loudness and dynamics in one visualization. So you have here the loudness, and here you have the dynamics. Uh, and you can see if I change, for example, the gain, um, you can see that the loudness is decreasing, so it goes further, further down. Um, and so are the dynamics, because it's not as much limited um, as it would uh, have been if, if I increased the gain. Um, mm -hmm. So you can see that, that this X is not like, and it shows that it's impossible to just increase the loudness while not increasing the dynamics. This is an inherent relation, and people have to understand it when, when mixing, that it's always a trade-off between how loud do I want to be and how much dynamics do I want to preserve. Yeah. Um, and now you may wonder what these two green um, areas here is, are. Um, these areas should help you to get a kind of a reference for where this X like, should probably head to. Um, on the one hand, you can you have a reference for the loudness, which means, for example, if you're delivering for Spotify, we all know that we should have a minimum loudness of minus 14 lufs so that Spotify doesn't turn it up. If you're louder, that's not really a big problem because it's just turned down to the same level as all the other tracks, but there is no more processing by Spotify. So we want to make sure we are louder than minus 14 lufs, and this, that's this green line here. On the other hand, um, we selected a genre. In this case, it's pop. Um, 2000s, uh, and there is a reference region for tracks um, that we analyzed that were released in, in this genre, and it shows us, okay, our track is at the lower end of how dynamic, like the, the, far, the further right we go, the, the less dynamic it gets, the more squeezed it gets. So if I, if I fully kind of squeeze it up, then you can see loudness goes up, but also dynamics are reduced. Um, and by going down a bit, I can kind of give back some dynamics if I want to and make sure that I, yeah, I'm in a region that, that's sensible for, for this kind of music. So um, we want to we wanna essentially aim that crosshair where the two green sections are overlapping to get something similar to whatever profile we've chosen. Exactly, exactly. So, so for example, if I, if I click, so, because now we are slightly below, um, which is not a big problem. Normally, it's just it means that we're they're a bit more dynamic than other tracks of this genre. And if I click the quality check, um, it tells me how could I go into this field here. So it says, okay, try increasing the input gain to reduce the dynamics. So I I try that and I do that. Now it listens again to the signal. And since I'm I should be uh, hitting the green area now, it says, okay, everything is looking good. Um, kind of you're you're ready. Uh, for release. This, so is, this is amazing. Something... This is absolutely amazing. It's literally, so it is smart, but it's actually helping us become smarter because if you do this enough, enough times over and over again, you're going to start to get the relationship between the two. The fact, yeah, it, it, this is great. This is absolutely exactly. wonderful. And what's also like interesting is that if you change, normally if you have a loudness monitoring tool, for example, and you have, because we see the integrated loudness value here, which means the loudness over the whole track or the whole observation period. Um, and normally, if you change some parameter, you have to restart the measurement from scratch 
so that the tool forgets everything it has seen before and you have to replay back everything. And what we do is we predict. So if I change something, you can see that the plugin predicts where you are heading to. So it's the result, like the outcome of your parameter changes are visibly much, much quicker than if you would stop playback, reset the measurement, start from st So this is, this is, again, it's a feature that feels totally natural, but it's normally not part of, of, um, of metering plugins or- Well, that's or what limited. LUFs are, right? Is, is, that's the one that's the whole relationship of the entire track, right? Exactly. If you have yeah. the, I mean, there, you can have integrated short-term or momentary, but if you have integrated, it's really like the, the loudness over the whole track or at least more than 60 seconds according to the standard. But um, uh, yeah, by, by, having, by having this instant impact prediction, again, you're really quick in kind of finding the right adjustments to, to yeah, hit a certain target.